I'm here in Vienna to explore a connection between two of its most famous sons. The artist Gustav Klimt and the inventor of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud. This is Café Central in Vienna. Now, at the end of the 19th century, this city witnessed a huge cultural upheaval, a vast shift in the human perception of reality itself. And this, as it happens, was the favourite hangout of the leading artist of the time, Gustav Klimt. He'd sit there with his coffee and his favourite pastry, Gugelhoof, perfect fuel for an artistic revolution. Did Klimt and Freud ever meet? Nobody really knows. Klimt wasn't a great talker about himself or his work, and once said, if you want to know about me, just look at my paintings. I can't help wondering what Dr. Freud might have seen. Klimt, like Freud, placed sexuality at the heart of human experience. His obsession with the female form and psyche created an endless parade of painted women. This one wants to seduce you. This one wants to dominate you. This one wants to cut off your head. And these don't even need you. I think Freud would have had a field day with Klimt. The artist lived with his mother his entire life, was rumoured to have 14 illegitimate children, but never married. And it all comes out in his paintings. But as a young artist, his first mission was to please authority, the father figures. In 1888, Klimt got the commission to paint the ceiling of one of the greatest of the new buildings on Vienna's Ringstrasse, the Burgtheater. What an ego trip for an artist still in his 20s. Klimt's commission was to paint the history of theatre, which he dutifully did with his brother Ernst. But even then, Klimt was sneakily pushing the boundaries of acceptable taste. In the process, revealing some of his own sexual fantasies and fears. Tellingly, at the heart of this allegorical epic is the death scene from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, love and death tragically entangled. It contains one of Klimt's only self-portraits. Was this the painter's equivalent of a Freudian slip? Does it reveal his fear of attachment? Even here, when Klimt's being at his most official and his best behaved, I think you can feel the, the simmering tensions and the preoccupation, the obsession with death and sex that would fuel his work for the rest of his life. At the age of 30, Klimt was traumatized when his brother and father died within months of each other. His art would take a dramatic and dark turn. This is a preliminary study for medicine one of three murals commissioned by Vienna University, which wanted a celebration of modern medicine, philosophy and law. But Klimt's radical, pessimistic depiction of man in thrall to his sexuality sparked Vienna's artistic scandal of the century. The completed murals were destroyed by the Nazis at the end of World War II. In the mural philosophy, the imagery was dark, sexually provocative, in a disorientating metaphysical space, humanity is cast adrift. The rejection of his murals by the university was a devastating setback for Klimt. For a time, he continued to challenge the authorities by leading a rebellious movement of artists who called themselves the Secessionists. In the basement of the Secessionist Movement Gallery is one of Klimt's most famous surviving works, the Beethoven Frieze. It's a fresco inspired by Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. The building and the mural are intended to embody a secession movement ideal, the synthesis of painting, architecture, and music into a total work of art. A gesamt Kunstwerk. It's my favorite abstract noun in German. These floating souls represent human longing, along with the poor and the weak, who turn to the knight in shining armor for their protection. What he's done is create a kind of fantasy version of trauma. 
and those evil spirits have lost the force of his earlier work. They're almost like cartoons. And there's something ludicrous about that gorilla in the middle. And then you get to the end, and this is paradise. The embrace is a sort of vision of heaven within a golden form that's itself a marriage of womb and phallus. What he's doing now is using art to escape from reality. This was the beginning of Klimt's so-called gold period, full of dazzling decorative imagery intended to flatter his bourgeois patrons. These are the images that would launch a million Klimt posters. As Freud wrote his interpretation of dreams, Klimt was creating his own gilded dream space to escape his inner demons. There's no evidence that Freud and Klimt ever knew each other, although they must have passed on the street countless times. But unwittingly, they were part of the same extraordinary project. And although Klimt, in the end, turned away from his own personal demons, he'd already opened a Pandora's box, and he'd inspired generation after generation of artists to look not to the outside world for truth, but within. <laughs>